Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to feature two products in this video from Wise Owl Paint. I'm super excited to try them. Um, we're going to work with their primer and then also their chalk synthesis paint. I have two colors of the paint and I have a whole big can of primer, which I'm super excited to try this guy. So um, I, I did another video recently that featured their one hour enamel. So if you didn't catch that, make sure you go back in my library and check it out. It is an awesome paint, completely different than chalk paint. So check it out. Part one was brushing it on. Part two was spraying it on. Super, super great. So today we're going to try out these two products and see what we think. So with primers, it can be super challenging. Primers are a whole different beast. They are not like paint. They don't go on the same way. They don't dry the same way. Um, and so I'm super picky about the primer that I use. I have one that I have found so far that, that works for me. So I'm really anxious to try this one out and see what I think. I just wanna read a little bit about the primer on the label to you guys. Basically, what it says, it's an exceptional multi-purpose interior and exterior primer, sealer, and stain killer. There's the key. Keep in mind, primer doesn't always mean stain blocker. So this is kind of an all-in-one. You can go shopping for primers, and there's all different things. So if you are looking specifically to make sure that you don't have any bleed through, then you want a primer with stain blocker, and this has it. Um, this primer is exceptional for covering many types of stains and providing adhesion on a wide variety of hard to stick surfaces. So one question I get all the time from um, subscribers and followers is do I have to prime every piece? The answer is no, you do not. Um, there's going to be certain cases where you do need to prime. Either you've got a piece that's going to have some bleed through and those are typically pieces like cherry, mahogany, um, even sometimes some of the oaks will, will bleed through. If you're doing certain light colors on the light spectrum, you're going to want to prime those so that you ensure that you don't have that bleed through. The other thing you can use the primer for is for spot priming. If you've got certain stains um, that you want to make sure you see maybe an oil stain on your piece or uh, just different types of stains, you can spot prime. I spot prime all the time. Um, on certain pieces. So it doesn't necessarily mean I have to cover the entire piece. The other reason why you want to prime is like this said, you want adhesion. So you've got maybe a surface that you're going to be painting that you're a little leery whether or not that paint is going to stick and you're going to be able to scratch it right off. Prime it. So we're going to check this out together today. I'm super excited. Um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and tip the camera down. We are going to open up the cans and check it out. We're going to start with our primer, obviously, and then we will move on to the chalk synthesis paint. So stay tuned. All right, you guys. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I popped the lid off, and you want to make sure you absolutely stir this up. Um, primers can tend to be thick. You want to make sure you go in circular motions, kind of lift at the bottom, making sure that you get anything that isn't fully mixed in mixed. This one actually is uh, mixed pretty well. I shook it already and now I'm stirring it and we're good to go. So I just want to show you the consistency of primer. It's not super thick but it is a little thicker than some of the paints so that's why sometimes it can be hard to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that aside. We're gonna get started. Now I am gonna use a foam brush for today. I usually use a foam brush with my primers. Now you can use a brush that says basically cleanup is just with um, soapy water immediately. I don't like to use my good Klingon brushes with um, primer. I just haven't had good luck with that. And so I've been fine using a foam brush. But you can definitely use your good paintbrush, no problem. So let's go ahead and dip in. Now I will tell you, primers typically have a funky smell. They smell a little strong. So just keep that in mind. If you're painting this inside, it might bother you. I would paint um, my primer in a really well ventilated area um, to avoid um, maybe that bothering you. So I'm priming this piece. As you can see, um, it's going on pretty easily. I do have a lot of primer kind of loaded up on my brush but I've only dipped in twice and I'm working with what I've got here. Um, it actually seems to be spreading really nice. 
Uh, usually, the primer that I have been working with is the Bin Primer Stain Blocker. That primer is not one that you can work over and over and over. So I'm impressed that right now I am working this a few times um, across the board and I am not experiencing um, that drag. And you will see with primer, it's very um, transparent. You'll see any of those brush marks um, left behind by that primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this. We're gonna do two coats of primer on this because I really wanna see how this works. And sometimes pieces call for a few coats of that primer. Sometimes if you're just doing it um, for adhesion purposes, you can get away with one to two coats. Some will need two to three coats depending on the purpose um, of priming your piece. But so far that first coat um, went on actually very well. I'm gonna show you guys up close so you can see um, how well it actually did not leave brush strokes or anything behind. Um, went on very, very well. So let's go ahead and let that dry and we will come back and we'll do the second coat of primer. All right, so just a few things while we're waiting for that first coat to dry. As I said in that last segment, um, you can do um, one coat of primer depending on what your needs are, or you may have to do two and sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes three. Um, so in this case, I only need to do one because I'm not trying to fix anything with this piece. All I'm trying to do is just cover our previous painted surface. Um, so one coat is going to be more than enough, but I want to do two coats because I want to see how this recoats. Sometimes I talk about this in all my videos um, when I'm doing my paint reviews. Sometimes your first coat can go on great and you have challenge with the second coat. I just want to see how this layers up, so we're going to do two. Um, as far as the dry time goes, it's one hour, it's dry to the touch. However, you want to make sure you do not recoat for four hours. So, my recommendation if they're putting those instructions specifically on the can, follow them. There's a reason. They've tested this out. You recoat too soon, you're going to create a mess for yourself. So even though it might feel dry to you, it is not ready to be recoated. So make sure that you build that into your project timeline. It's a little different when you have to prime a project than just going in and painting. Because painting, you wait the recoat time, you throw on your second coat and your third coat, you're done. Priming, in this case, if you're doing two coats, you've got quite a window in there you're gonna have to wait. So just make sure that when you're priming a piece, take your time, don't rush, make sure you do it the right way and you're, you will come out with the most beautiful end result, I promise. So um, as I mentioned, I use a foam brush. That may not work for you, you might not like them. I get really good quality foam brushes. I don't get the cheap ones um, like from Dollar Store or um, even Harbor Freight. I don't care for their foam brushes. I go with a really high quality um, firm foam brush. Works for me. You can use a good nylon polyester brush. Um, I just don't prefer to do that, haven't needed to do that. If you do, make sure you clean with warm soapy water right away. Primer can tend to be a little bit harder to get off your paintbrush than paint can. Also, you can thin the primer if you need to. I didn't feel like I needed to. It is a thick consistency, but it's not so thick I had problems working with it. Laid down really nice on that first coat. So as soon as this is dry, I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat and then we'll go from there and let that dry and then we'll start with our paint, okay? Okay, so one thing I wanna mention um, before I go ahead and recoat with my second coat of primer, primer obviously is different than paint. It's got a different feel, look, smell, texture, the whole bit. So with that being said, um, you may not like the texture and when you build up your paint coats after your primer without sanding them, you're gonna feel that. So you can definitely sand your primed board. You can sand it in between the primed coats and you can sand it prior to your paint going on. I use these um, fine finishing um, sanding pads. Um, it's equivalent to like a 220 grit sanding pad, ultra fine, fine, anything that you can find at your um, hardware stores, these are great. So I use these basically, it's just a real light sand that will 
it, it already just made it so much smoother. Um, that will take any uh, texture or grit out of that piece and allow you to have a very smooth finish. So if that's a worry or concern of yours, is the texture of the primer is going to affect the um, texture of your paint, give it a little sound, a little knockdown. Um, I have a high spot here of some primer. I can also knock that down. So now we're smooth as butter and we are ready to go ahead and put on our second coat. All right, so I just unwrapped my brush. If you do use these foam brushes, just wrap them up in saran wrap in between while you're waiting for it to dry, you should be fine. Um, I definitely wouldn't leave it overnight because it will be hard as a rock in the morning. Um, so let's go ahead and get this second coat on. And you know, I do have people ask me why I don't use um, you know, primer or um, anything but paint with my paint brushes. I'm just particular that way. I use my primer, I use a certain brush, my paint, I use a certain brush, my top coats, I use a certain brush. I do not use one brush for all purposes, just me. Um, you know, I have several different brushes for several different purposes and I just like it that way. But it is not to say that you have to do that and have to have a huge supply of brushes or, you know, 15 different brushes to do the job, you can definitely use a good brush for all of the, the things. So this is going on really nice. Um, there is no drag. I love the fact that there's workability with this. That is something that I have found in the past with other primers um, that is difficult. Even the bin primer that I currently use, I have a hard time working it. Once I put it on, it's like I got to stop. Um, because what happens is it, it sets up. It's not drying fast, but it's setting up so fast that it is not allowing me to take out maybe if I have some brush marks in there, um, unevenness or whatever. So this has really great workability time. And yeah, I'm really impressed with it so far. Let's go ahead and let this dry. And then I will knock it down before we start with our chalk paint, just because I really want the smoothest surface possible. And again, when you're sanding, you're using that fine sanding pad. You're not sanding it off, you're just smoothing it out. So that's our second coat. Let's let that dry and we'll come back in a little bit. All right guys, so we have both of the coats of primer on and I'm gonna show you the board. This is two coats of primer really really nice um, I did sand in between coats as you saw I used the 220 grit sanding pad for that it has created an ultra smooth finish no ridges no lines no funky texture whatsoever so I definitely recommend that because no matter what primer you use you are going to probably want to do that to achieve that best finished look with your paint that you're going to layer on next I did go ahead with two coats because I wanted to see how this built up how it layered how the coverage increased all those good things and I really really like it holding this piece right now just feeling it um, I am in love with this primer now for the last few years I have really narrowed it down to one primer I've been using and sometimes I had challenges with that um, just because it can be challenging to prime pieces especially when the primer sets up really quickly and like I said we want to make sure that we're laying down our paint on the most beautiful prepped finish that we can I really like this. Um, it does have quite a heavy odor, which is no different than any other primer on the market. They all smell. So make sure you work in a well-ventilated area if you're gonna be using this inside. Have windows open, have air running. It's not super bad, but it is primer. So it's got you know a little bit more of a fragrance to it than a paint if you're not used to that. Definitely sand in between coats. It will give you the most beautiful finish. Um, as I layered up that second coat, I had absolutely no problem laying this down and I am ready for paint, so I'm super excited. Um, I am gonna be using this primer on a piece so that I can really get the feel of it. It is, you know, a small board, which, you know, some people might think, well, you're not getting the true feel for the paint or the primer or whatever product you're using. That's not true. I do believe you can get a really good feel for something right off the bat. I typically know within moments when I'm using a new product whether I like it or not. I do like this. So I'm going to try this on a, um, an entire piece that does need some priming and see how that goes. So let's go ahead and move on to the chalk paint portion of the video. And like, I just want to remind you keep in mind to read those directions on the can follow them four hours is the recoat time make sure you wait you're gonna get the best 
uh, result possible by doing so. So let's go ahead and tip the camera down and get our paint on this freshly primed piece. All right, you guys, so I want to show you the two colors. I think I'm going to go with the darker. This is the um, color Carbon. It is a really beautiful um, gray, black gray. And then this one is gray linen. And this one is really pretty. It is just what it sounds like. It's in between a gray and a linen. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that's that one. And then this is the Carbon. I'm holding up the lids because the cans are way too full to tip over and show you guys. So today I think we'll go ahead and use the Carbon for the video's purpose. And I am going to go ahead and use my Klingon F50. I absolutely love this brush. My opinion, it goes together with the Wiseau paint like bread and butter when I use the one hour enamel. It just absolutely, I use this with all paints, but I absolutely loved it with the one hour enamel. I do wanna read a little bit from the can for you guys. It's a VOC free non-toxic paint. It's a mineral paint. It's, it claims to have amazing coverage and adhesion to most surfaces. No sanding, no priming is required prior to application. That is, keep in mind, because obviously we have primed this piece, that is unless you have a piece that does require priming. So it's kind of one of those things you kind of learn as you're in the business. Um, if you don't know, then you ask somebody, do I need to prime my piece? In this case, we did it because we're trying out their primer. So on a regular, really great looking piece, um, no problems, no issues, um, no chance of bleed through. You do not have to prime with their paint. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started and see what we think of this paint. I'm super excited. Okay, so first of all, I wanna talk about the consistency of the paint. And the consistency, I did stir these up, both of these off camera. The consistency is, as you can see, um, you know what, you can't see very well. I'm gonna move that for you. The consistency is pretty thin. I really like a thin consistency paint. I always kind of test it out to see how it falls off the brush, and I really like that. So that's easy to work with. In my opinion, the thinner the paint, the easier to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and tip that camera down a little bit more so you guys can see and zoom in. So let's go ahead and get this first coat on. Now our coverage really should um, show through in this video because we're going from a white primed piece to a dark color. So we should really be able to get a good idea how well this paint does cover. I did dip in my can with quite a bit of paint. I loaded up my paintbrush really well. Um, I am finding that the first coat is going on very smooth. No problem. I've got some really good workability time going back and forth, making sure that I'm brush stroke free and I get good coverage. So I'm liking that. Really liking that. That went on really nice and smooth. So um, my brushes are always sitting in water, so they are wet. I, I wring them out. I dry them off a little bit, but I always start with a wet brush. Um, it just makes the application process that much better. So let me show you guys. This is the first coat. Wow, the coverage is really good. That is one coat. As you guys saw me put on one coat dipped it pretty good in the paint so we did get a we did load up quite a bit on that board but that is great coverage for first coat so sorry about the autofocus my camera is having some technical difficulties um, but let's go ahead and wait for this to dry we will um, come back and recoat this the recoat time on their chalk paint is going to be I'm reading the label and I'm not seeing it so I'm gonna let you guys know that in just a few moments when I come back all right you guys so this is the first coat completely dry I want to show you the coverage that you get it's really really nice that is one coat and we're gonna go ahead and put on the second coat now. It's totally dry. I actually have a message into the owner of the company to ask her about the dry time. On the website, it just says when it's dry, and on the can, it says when it's dry. I It's been an hour, and for a board this size, totally dry. So just wanted to let you know that when I find out that information, I'll either put it in the comments down below the video, 
or I will, you'll see it flash across the screen. So I'm still waiting to hear back on that. Okay. All right, you guys, we are ready for our second coat. Now I went ahead and I sanded down with my 220 grit sanding pad in between the coats. You do not need to do that. It says right on the can, you do not need to do that. Why did I do it? Because when I ran my hand over it, I just felt a little bit of stuff in it and I want it super smooth. So now I've got an entirely smooth surface and I just wanted to test the theory of sanding in between coats just to see um, you know, if there was any issue with it. Normally there is not. Um, most paints you can do that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this second coat on and see how we like it. I had my brush wrapped up so I did not get it wet again. I typically do not do that unless I'm having issues with the um, application of the paint, then sometimes I will get my brush wet, dip it, spray the piece, whatever I need to do to help my um, paint uh, glide across the piece easier. I'm not finding that I need to do that here. Um, the application of the second coat goes on really, really nice. I feel like I'm getting really good coverage and I can work it a few times different directions. I like to do that with my pieces to ensure that I get really good coverage. Um, depending on the look you're going for, that will obviously be different for you. I want superior coverage, no peek through, and a solid, solid color. I'm not gonna be distressing or anything like that today, so I want the best coverage I can possibly get. And that is it for our second coat. I do not see any areas that need any more coverage, and I felt like even as warm as it is right now, um, it's in the morning, but it's probably about 80, 85 right now um, in my workshop, and that's about the time that I stop painting. Um, anything warmer than that, you're gonna start having issues with your application process, and that's just surely because it's too warm. The paint is gonna set up too quickly, and it has nothing to do with the way you're doing it. It's just the um, weather conditions, so. Um, we will go ahead and let that dry and then we will come back and we will take a look at that second coat coverage See what we think All right, you guys we are at the end of the video. We have our two coats on I'm going to show you the board momentarily the coverage is excellent I really really liked it two coats and I am done now different colors may require more coats I always like to tell you that lighter colors tend to need more coats for coverage, but Today we did a dark color and two coats was absolutely sufficient. I've got zero peek through and it finished out really nicely. So um, together with my Klingon brush, I feel like the finish came out beautifully. First coat went on really, really nice and the second coat I had no problems, no dragging, no need to re-wet my brush or add water to thin it out. It went on really nice and I kind of pushed the envelope today because I would say we're working on about 80, maybe 85 in the workshop so keep that in mind if you paint outside. Um, too hot is not going to be good for your paint and you're going to have a lot more of a difficult problem putting on your paint and getting a nice smooth finish. So just keep that in mind when it comes to your climate. But anyway, here is the board. I really like it. I really love the finish. It is a matte finish. Now keep in mind you do have to seal this chalk synthesis paint. Um, you leave it unsealed and you're leaving yourself open to the fact that you are not going to have a long lasting finish. So make sure you check their website. They have several different products you can use for top coat. I am going to be doing another video where we feature one of their top coats which is the satin varnish. I have used it before and I really like it. So. We're gonna test it out though on a whole piece and see what happens. So just keep that in mind. You do need to seal your piece for optimal um, you know, longevity of your piece. So that is that. A couple things I wanted to go over with you. Um, I unfortunately do not have a retailer that's close to me. If I did, I would have been down there picking out my paint personally. I did order online, um, which is really easy to navigate their website. I do have an affiliate link as well as a discount code, and I'm going to put that in this video for you guys. So take advantage of that this month because it won't last forever. And there's nothing better than getting a discount when you're ready to order on any of the Wise Owl products or Klingon products brushes. So I have, um, I looked up, there are seven, I'm in California, they have seven California locations. Unfortunately, none of them were close enough to me to be able to run down there and check it out. That is my preference. I like to look, see, touch, feel in person, check out the displays, but look up on their website to see if there is a retailer near you. I would definitely recommend going and checking out their products because so far I am impressed and I really like um, the few products that I have used and I'm going to continue to use some more so I can continue to check 
out all their product line. Now, as far as their paint colors go, they have a really great selection, over 60 colors. I think it might be 63, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty close to that number, but not 100% sure that it is 63. Um, but I know that there is over 60 colors, so a lot to choose from. Um, you know, a lot of times that you'll get a paint line that might only have 20 colors and then you have to mix and match. If that's not your thing, I have a feeling you will find the color that's right for you. The color today carbon that I ordered is exactly the way I thought it would be, a blackish gray. So the description was great and I wasn't disappointed. Sometimes you'll open a can and go, oh, that's not the color I thought it was going to be. This was the color and so was that gray linen. It's exactly what I thought it would be, an in-between a gray, a light gray, and a linen color, and it, and it is. So um, I was happy with that. So anyway. I just wanted to thank you guys for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for being subscribers. I do appreciate you as always. Please keep, keep, keep subscribing so you can continue to get all of my videos. Please feel free to leave any um, questions or positive comments down below and I will make sure that I get back to you guys um, and I will catch you on that next video. Stay tuned and look for the one where I feature the piece as well as the top coat. Okay, thanks you guys, bye-bye.